Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to another In Conversation with ATF episode. I've got two guests on my show today, a father and son duo. My first guest is the voice of Bobby in Deer Squad, Baby Shark in Pink Fong and Baby Shark Space Adventure, Groot in the 2020 Spider-Man cartoon, Baby Grizz in We Baby Bears, um, and has also done voices in Eureka, Super Wings, Amphibia, and Blaze and the Monster Machines, and more. My second guest is Bio in Bayo. Is it Bayo or Bio? Bio. Bio. There we go. Um, Bio. Bio in the Beach Buds, the Scarecrow in Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham Overworld, Herberto in Barbie Dreamtopia, Charlie in The Queen's Corgi, Scurvy P in Playmobil the Movie, York in Bada Bean, the Beekeeper in Megaton Girl, and loads more. My guests. Are I, I've been know. around a while, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and uh, it just came out on Netflix a couple of days ago is... Oh, yes, that- uh, 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 chicken hair and the golden and the, the, or the, darkness? the darkness the hamster darkness that's it chicken hair and the hamster darkness and uh and in that i'm barry the duck this and is another character wise cracky duck yes and and one other character i'm i'm a possum librarian wow. uh who's actually a gal oh um, yeah and uh so i'm those two characters in that movie and right now, here in the States, uh, it's in the Netflix top 10 most watched movies. So we're like, wow, <laughs> that's oh, cool. So I that really just like dropped on Friday. Uh, and also recently came out is the Evil Dead video game. And I'm just a bunch of deadites throughout that whole thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And recently, uh, the show Stillwater uh on i believe apple tv connor and i both have been doing episodes of Stillwater. nice one yes my guests are dino andrade and connor andrade welcome yay thank you for having us you're welcome i don't know you're both voice actors so i was wondering should i do a joint interview or a separate one but i thought it'd be more fun to do a joint one we are kind of joined at the hip I, i i do feel like i'm i'm raising my best buddy here Oh, bless. I'd like to um, start by asking, how are you both today? I'm good. I'm good. Yay. I got, I got yes, to sleep sir. last good. night. That's good. That's my, my favorite thing about his summer vacation. I get to sleep in. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a heavy sleeper. I take naps every day, so that's why I love There you this. go. <laughs> there you go. How are you doing, son? Good. I am amazing. Yay. There you go. He's good and amazing. <laughs> well, I'm Yay. glad to hear that. You're both good and amazing indeed. Um, I'd like to start by asking. Um, this is for both of you. Um, I don't mind which one of you answers first. How did you both get into voice acting? Um, How about I start since I started first? Okay. I used to be what they call a Foley walker. Uh, which is where you add manual sound effects to picture, uh, and you know, like like uh, like you know, there might be a a monster that's being stabbed, and it's uh, actually a guy like me with a screwdriver and a watermelon, you know, in front of a microphone, you know, yeah. and so on. And 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 I was working on a movie called House back in 1985, um, which is the uh, a famous horror comedy. Uh, directed uh, directed by Steve Miner. It starred uh, William Cat and Richard Mull, and they needed somebody to voice the little critters in that movie. And I just jumped in and did it, and it this <laughs> thing. And uh, Steve Miner liked it, and I wound up on the Wallet team doing a bunch of voices throughout the movie. Uh, and that's where it all started. Uh, I took a break in the '90s to pursue independent filmmaking, then went back to it after um so i've been in this business since roughly 85 wow so for a yeah. good uh, for, uh 30 while i'm old <laughs> 37 years yeah. so connor tell your story of how you got into voiceover well my dad was a bad guy in this movie called sam sam that was made by a french people uh verite yeah they're verite I've, I've done a bit other work for that for verite before but anyway he was the big bad guy it was called sam sam go watch the movie it's cool anyway and he was a bad guy right 
And they asked if I could be, in, if I could like audition for being in the movie, and they auditioned for the main character Psychic, and I got it! Yeah! And I said the stuff, I made the funny noises into the microphone, and I got a job. Nice one. Uh, may I ask who voiced Sam Sam? I, have I no don't idea. know. We recorded that separately. Hmm. Connor and I recorded together, but I'm not sure who voiced Sam Sam. Hmm, let me just have I'm a afraid. look. Uh, I think I found it. Was it made in 2019? That sounds about right. Okay, I think... Oh. That sounds about right. It just has the French cast on Wikipedia. Oh, uh, oh, hang on. Oh, on IMDb. I've just found it here. Let's have a look. Uh, it's Don't tell me it's just a French cast. Oh, well, I find that out. Um, I'd like to ask you, um, Dino, your mm-hmm. first wife was the late, great Mary Kay Bergman. Um, she so- was indeed. Beautiful, beautiful lady, um, taken far too soon. I'd like to ask, what was it like to know her? Oh, well, Mary Kay was a force of nature. I what mean, was it like to be her husband? <laughs> uh, you know, she she was an inspiration. Uh, she was, uh, I, I would refer, as far as voice, the world of voiceover is concerned, I would I would consider her a thoroughbred. I mean, she trained with some of the giants of the industry, people like Dawes Butler, uh, uh, for example, was, was one of her chief mentors. Uh, I mean, she did over 30 television series, over 20 feature films, and she were, she was the voice of Snow White for Disney for a decade. I, I, you know, it was, it, it was a whirlwind. It was it, it, watching her work I learned so much about acting. I learned especially a lot. Everything I learned about character acting, I learned from Mary Kay. Mary Kay was, she, she, was, a, she was just this tremendous force of nature and, and very, very inspirational to see how one inhabits a character. And the thing, the, the main thing about her was that she really wanted to make people laugh. She really, her, her, her hero was Carol Burnett. And she wanted to be another Carol Burnett in the in in the way of bringing a lot of joy to a lot of people, um, and uh, that's you know that was that was her. And if if not for her illness, um, she'd be still doing it today. You know, we all we all miss her dearly. We do indeed. I know her as Daphne in some of the Scooby Doo direct yep. video films, Zombie mm-hmm. Island, Alien Invaders which is ghosts. I grew up watching mm-hmm. those. Connor, um, has your dad ever told you stories about Mary Kay or have you seen some of her work? Barely. I remember she did the yodeling for Jesse and Toy Story. She did, yeah. And I mean, I've seen the Snow White. I didn't know that was actually her. Uh, the, the, it was, she did the books on tape. Uh, she did the lost footage, but she didn't do the actual movie. Oh. That was done by Adriana Casalotti back what's in the, the 1930s. What's the lost footage? Uh, this was, uh, these were pencil tests and scenes that were cut from the original mm. Snow White. They were re-included in some of the deluxe editions of Snow White, uh, but they had no audio. So it's Mary Kay that revoiced them. Mm. Wow. That's, that's amazing, that. Wow. Um, so... Connor, you're obviously just starting out in the industry, but you've got such a good resume so far. I mean, with Wee Baby Bears and Deer Squad and stuff like that. What I've got to ask you, what's your what's your dream cartoon to work on? What is a cartoon that you've always wanted to do voice work on or you'd like to do voiceover work on? I don't know if I have one. Well, think about Mickey it. Mickey Mouse? What? Maybe a Star Trek thing? I don't know. Yeah, I've Star Trek never really team. had one. I just like doing voice acting. Oh, I've just found out it's Tucker Chandler who uh, voiced Sam Sam. Hmm. Tucker Chandler. I, th- I don't know if it's Chandler or Chandler, but that's what it says on IMDb. Let's put that there. So also, Connor, I'd like to ask you, um, this is going to be a hard one. What's your favorite role you've done so far? Hmm. My favorite to actually like be in was We Baby Bears um and still is my still favorite is, not just, was <laughs> is um my favorite to do um is actually deer squad oh um because 
The scripts are usually pretty short, actually. And uh, my favorite, uh, and my favorite that I actually like being in the booth and talking and stuff was, it's not out yet, a show for, I don't know if I can say that, it's not out yet, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we can talk about shows that aren't out yet. Well, oh, that's okay. it's coming somewhere, I don't know if I can even say where. Uh, you you may be talking about the one that's coming out to Apple TV. Yeah, that yep, one. Yep, that Apple one. Whatever. Okay, yeah. Unfortunately, we can't talk about that yet. <laughs> oh. In fact, both of us, both of us got starring roles in two different oh. shows, both going to be on Apple TV, and they're both in post production right now. Wow. And I'm hoping they're both going to come out at the same time because that would be kind of wild. Uh, and uh, I actually got to guest on his show. Oh. which was kind of neat. <laughs> wow. So, wow. so yeah, so we're, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. I did an episode or two. I can't remind you what it was that I did because, because we can't legally talk about it, but yeah. Yep, well, yep. I also guessed it on We Baby Bears, but those episodes haven't uh, aired yet. Ah, I see. So are you both with the same agency then? Are you with two Yes, we agents? are. Yeah, I mean, that's how it came about with Sam Sam. Uh, I asked my agent, I said, look, Connor's going to be auditioning for Sam Sam. If he gets the part, will you represent him? And they said, well, we'll do it as a courtesy, um, but he will not be considered a client. He'll be considered a freelancer. And it was like, okay, that's fine. And he got it. But at the same time, I also sent the agency footage that I shot at Connor's callback audition, where they just had Connor jump through all kinds of hoops. And I recorded it on video and I sent it to the agents and said, I need you to see what my son was doing. They saw it. So they, they started sending more auditions for mm -hmm. Super Wings and, uh, and, and Fruit Loops commercials and a Google television campaign. And he booked each one of them successively. Wow. So immediately the agent was like, Here's the contract. He's a client now. <laughs> and that's how, but it all started with Sam Sam. Yeah. Wow. Connor, well done, you. Superstar. Hey. And also, cool. there was a joke that um, me and the director always had during the Apple show I can't talk about. But there's a joke. It has nothing to do with the show. It has to do with Tuna. It's very weird. But the director, I think, I don't remember. It was so long ago they recorded it, but um, they had uh, um, uh, this like tuna sandwich or something, mm -hmm. and then somebody brought like healthy like vegan tuna, and they called it tuno, tuno. and they all tried it, and it tasted terrible. <laughs> and somebody made this little crochet of like, a little sandwich with tuna in it. it said tuna on it, and it's in the director's back. Every time we start up a session, the director would pull it out and move on to the script. It was hilarious. Made jokes about it throughout the, the whole show. So it became a I constant remember. joke at every recording yeah. session, which I remember because when Connor's in that booth, the one right behind us, when right Connor's there. in this booth, I'm on the other side recording the backup and monitoring the levels here. So I'm here for every one of his sessions. Wow. And yes, he and the director making two no jokes back and forth. He'll be editing and photos and then two no, two no, two no, two no. Yeah. And I've since recorded with that same director on a new Barbie series that's that's either coming yeah. out or has been out for a while. And I've just been casting that. I'm doing that. And I, I see that two no can there still in his like background tuna. there. And it's like, Perfect. oh, two no. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. It's it's become a, a running joke. Remember, uh, speaking of uh, uh, Barbie, didn't you do this job for like a Barbie movie a long time ago? It was a like, Barbie. Were, like, uh, it was Polly? a Barbie series called Barbie Dream Topia, and that was done for YouTube. Uh, uh, but this this one uh, may also be an internet series. I don't remember, um, but it's one that's that's currently in production right now. Uh, oh, well, I remember you telling me uh, when you started voice acting, there was this like folly thing you did or whatever of people talking. Folly thing of people talking. Do you remember? You were talking about me in the car one day when we were at school. I'm trying to remember. You're saying that, that it didn't really count because you, I don't, I don't think you got paid. You just kind of said stuff in on my phone. I don't remember that either. Oh, you're talking about Walla. 
Yeah, the Walla. Walla, yeah, no, that yeah, wasn't yeah. that was the Barbie job. But yes, I've done a number of Walla sessions. I've done Walla yeah. sessions for Overwatch, World of Warcraft, yeah, but it wasn't various really your first movies. Thing. Uh, most paid? recently was a feature film. I think it was called Just Cause yeah. uh, that took place uh, with a, on that. death row, and I'm I'm these this screaming death row inmate in the background that you hear. Uh, um, yeah, I've done a number of Walla sessions. And that's where you're doing background voices yeah. for movies or games or what have you. Yeah. You ever hear uh, like a background voice? You're trying to show what they're saying? You won't be able to because just people go on the microphone going, I'm not going to no, sometimes it is sometimes it is just gibberish like yeah. that i did like the first three or four skylanders games like that i was actually cast in i think the first game and then they uh came back to me and said we are so sorry but the studio wants a celebrity in this role and i think i don't remember i could be wrong but i think it was bobcat goldthwaite who wound up uh coming in and re-recording uh what i uh, uh what i was working on or recording while I was wearing, I don't remember if I actually recorded it. And so they said, you know what, we're going to put you on the, on the Walla team instead. And I wound up doing the Walla team for like the next three or four games. So I actually worked on considerably more <laughs> than that first one there. So to be fair, I've never heard of Bob. So if that makes you feel any better. I've literally never heard of his name until you just met Okay. Him. Me neither. Okay. That's, me. that's actually happened a couple of times uh, where, 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 where they go in and redo things. Is that a cat uh, I can hear? That's our, that's one of our cats. Yes. Oh, uh, that's one of them. Can we bring the cat in front of the camera? No. Why? No, no, I want to show them no. the cat. It'll be with the headphones. No, Maybe if the cat, the cat comes over here, I'll pick the cat up, but no. No. But yes, that is one of our cats who's trying to figure out why we're in here talking without the cat. What's going on? So. <laughs> oh, bless. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. That's a weird thing. Yeah, that that actually that happened to me on on uh, one of the the GI Joe games actually when they oh. when they did the first GI Joe movie. I think it was Rise of Cobra. I think I was cast as Cobra doing the classic voice, like, Cobra, and, really? and it that whole yeah, and and we did the entire game, and it was amazing. They treated me like a rock star and everything, and then they and they were actually planning a a, a press tour for me and I, they had set up interviews and everything. And then it turned out that that the studio or somebody decided that, well, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays the character in the movie, he should do the game. And so the whole thing was re-recorded. I had really hoped my version, you know, of Cobra would have been an Easter egg on the game, but unfortunately not. So you know, I was like, darn, you know, but that, you know, these things happen, that's the business. These things happen. You know, I, I still had a ball doing it and, and I got paid for doing it. You know, unfortunately nobody got to hear it, but it was, it was, it was a fun session. I, I still had, I, I still enjoyed it. Oh, I'm glad you did Dino. Definitely. Um, if you don't mind me saying, uh, can I tell you about a few of my voiceover roles that I've done? Sure. Cause sure, I'm, I'm a voiceover sure. actress myself. Oh, Sure. Yeah, I've done a few amounts of voiceover. Um, I've had done a lot of auditions, but I've only managed to snag about three or four professional jobs so far. But it's a start. Hey, it's um, a start. Yeah. The first one I did was one of those coin operated rides. I'm not sure if you can see here. It's a helicopter. You might not be able to see, but I have a photo on my phone that you can have a gander at. Uh, here it is. Here is the photo. So this is heli the helicopter produced by a company up in leeds called northern leisure oh okay so, um so that was my first voiceover role i knew the technical director of the company so it was simply a favor for him they were like oh yeah we're doing a new ride and would you like to voice it i'm like yeah sure i did all my lines in my bedroom standing right here <laughs> with these exact apple headphones <laughs> so there you go I did that, went to the unveil, and I was like, oh, my God, it's beautiful. And just to hear, because I used to be scared of these kiddie rides when I was little. And then just to think I went from filming them for YouTube and then to actually hearing my voice on one, it was absolutely surreal. It felt so surreal. Just quickly, Connor, um, when you did your first ever voiceover role on a cartoon, how did you feel when you heard it, like, screened on, like, the TV or put on the internet? I was excited but then it was also like 
that's that's me. <laughs> that's me. It's on the TV. Wow. <laughs> oh, bless you. I was I was thinking the same thing as me because it's weird because when I do the voice still, I said things like Helly to Tower, come in Tower, and that's I'm like. I sound like that but that's that's me i could do a direct impression it's it's creepy <laughs> i could still do the voice um so the company then went into financial trouble due to covid and closed down i was essentially the voice of their last ride uh, that they made oh wow they made two is it models. still in operation no they made two models before covid hit no i meant the actual ride is it still where oh. it because uh, can, can somebody still go and drop a coin in it and Buzz around in it. One of them. Um, one, one of them, of them. is in Kringlen in Reykjavik. Uh, so apologies for pronouncing that wrong. In Iceland. Um, the others in storage in Leeds being refurbished. Is there any way you could get one? I wish. I wish. I wish. <laughs> I wish. I wish. It's so much. I. I'd say brand new. Um, well, used children's rides are usually between three hundred and seven hundred UK pounds. This helicopter is worth about one thousand five hundred because it's the only one of its kind in England. Right. Like ah, oh, so as much as I'd love one, I don't think it would happen, unfortunately, unless it gets retired from circulation completely. I don't know where this one in England's going, um, but hopefully it goes somewhere near me, so I can just go there in person and say, "Oh yeah, you know that helicopter? Yeah, that's me." <laughs> um, well, if that ever happens, if that ever happens, you you get a picture of yourself in it and send it to uh, to me and Connor. I will do indeed. I did get a picture of me in the helicopter at the trade show it was released at, and I did try to ride it, but it stopped. So I was like, okay, no, I'm getting off that. I'm not trying that again. I literally thought I broke it. I was like, oh no, I was so scared. Um, and the second one I've done is a theme park ride called Kooky Trails, which is a dark ride that's being built in California. I can't exactly say where it is, but it's in um, it's in California. Um, I nice. Thought- I voice a character on that and potentially a second character, depending, because I've just done my final callback. So it depends if I get that. But one of the characters I voice is a rabbit called Prestella. And she sort of talks a bit like a Wendy Darling accent. So a bit of it's sort of about like that. And, you know, I try to take inspiration from like Catherine Beaumont or anyone like that. So um, apparently I'm the only British Good person. For you. British character on Good the right. Yeah, that's fun. Um, well, um, keep us posted when it comes out. I will do indeed. Yeah, I don't think it, there is no theme park where it is. I think it's being built there, and then if a theme park, oh. like, like Six Flags, takes interest in it, it will then say, "Oh yeah, can we license the ride for our park?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure," and they just take the ride to that park. And, oh, okay. Uh, um, I'm trying to get an agent. Um, slowly trying to get there. Uh, doing a few freelancing uh, non-union jobs at the moment, but hopefully that will change and I can do some proper voice service soon. So fingers crossed for Yay. that. And fingers crossed for you, Connor, you get more big Yay. roles. It is. Well, he, he seems to be doing it, yes. What 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 were you saying then? What, that what? what that was was this was one of the times where uh I thought this was before Sam Sam where I started to get the idea that Connor might actually be good at this. Uh I got cast in a game, uh, Sony VR game called Star Blood Arena. It's VR? And, uh, and yes, it's a VR game. Could I play it? You probably can. Huh. Um, yeah, we should look it up. It might be in the, the download store. Hmm. Uh, you just put it on and just like, yeah. oh, hi, Doc. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I played these aliens uh, called uh, Tic Tac and Doe. And they had to speak alien gibberish. And so I was trying to practice alien gibberish. And he decided to just, I'll help out dad and I, taking gibberish back. And we just kept s- just spewing gibberish back and forth at each other. And that became my practice before the recording session. Wow. I had to come up with the language. It's Suki and it's pretty much just throw vowel sounds in there and then roll your R a bunch and make random accents. And <laughs> Rebecca, 
Pretty she much in that neighborhood, yeah. Liko to pa ni suka pa to. She bought me a room. It sounds somewhat Russian, Italian, something other. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of different languages. I I like it though. It reminds me of the uh, the Sims language, Simlish. Oh yeah, yep. that stuff. I call yeah. it Sukian because funny. Yep. Yeah, funny indeed. Yeah, and I think uh, do you know do you know who Scott White is? Scott White, Scott White. The actor. name is familiar, but I'm afraid it's not really. He's done a few out. video games. I think he was Crash Bandicoot in the latest uh, Crash 4. But um, yeah, he was one of the Sim voices in Sims 4. So I've seen a behind the scenes recording of him doing that. I think I have voice of the Sims. Um, there is a video on there. It is, there is a video out there somewhere. You just have to bear with me one moment. Um, it is, it's uh, another girl called... Uh, see a court or Kia court. oh i know i i i know her yeah how do you pronounce her first name sorry i believe it's uh i believe it's chia chia right. so i pronounced it completely chia. wrong then <laughs> you know it's like i i know her from seeing her at a zillion conventions and seeing her name printed and it's always hi. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Oh, oh, bad, bad voice actor, voice actor, naughty, naughty voice actor. I, I, I think I've always assumed it was Chia. I, I, you know, I might be wrong. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> After interview, her to find out maybe. How, how embarrassing. Oh, it's okay. I, I said, I said, see ya, uh, Chia. Oh yeah, I think it's Chia. What? Um, <laughs> um. I'd like to ask you both, um, uh-huh. Eva and Connor, what, cart- what cartoons did you grow up with? Because you two grew up in completely different generations. I mean, Dino, mm-hmm. you grew up with the old cartoons. Connor, you might have grown up with some more modern cartoons. So I'd like to know what were your favorites uh, that you watched growing up? Well, there are definitely some modern cartoons that Connor has watched that I haven't. But for the most part, a lot of the cartoons that I grew up with like the original Looney Tunes, uh, some of the early anime like uh, Speed Racer, Gigantor, uh, the, the, the classic Tex Avery cartoons, the classic uh, um, Tom and Jerry's, all those. I have mass collections and I show them to Connor every Saturday morning because we don't have Saturday morning cartoons anymore, which I used to live for as a kid. So I've kind of replicated that experience. So in reality, a lot of the cartoons that I grew up with that I inspired, he's also watching. Oh, that's lovely for you to pass down. <laughs> Definitely. Such timeless cartoons. Yeah. Um, Connor. What are some of oh. your favorites, son? Yeah, Connor, um, your favorites? Well, the ones I like and voice acting in, those are cool. But ones I saw when I was really little, there's like that Wubsy's World or whatever. Wow, wow, that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was like the best cartoon ever when I was little. Mm-hmm. And then there was also like I'd watch like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and stuff at my grandma's house because she had cable TV. You flip the channel and hope you get to the right thing, hope you put in the right number, then ask grandma why it is not Mickey Mouse and why it's a talk show. <laughs> Yeah, same as me. I grew up with all the channels back in the day uh, because we were rich. Um, <laughs> we had like a big skybox that had all the channels on it. it. Would have Disney Channel, Playhouse Disney, Nick Junior, and then like stuff like uh, CITV and CBBS, which are British channels. And we also had we had Cartoon Nito um, all the way back then before America got it. Uh, we had it as early as two thousand and seven. So I grew up. But that was that. new. In America it is, but it's been around in England for about 14, 15 years now. Um, we, I, I grew up watching it. They had shows like A Pup Named Scooby-Doo, uh, Tom and Jerry Kids, uh, what other ones? They had Baby Looney Tunes uh, and a few others that I grew up with. Uh, but yeah, cool. that's such a good cool. channel. That was. He's also recently discovered and really loves uh, the Animaniacs. Yeah. And well, uh, rediscovered, I saw it before and I thought it was hilarious. And then I rewatched it and it's still hilarious. I, I'm also currently showing Connor uh, uh, the Batman the Animated Series, uh, <laughs> Samurai Jack, uh, The Simpsons, Futurama. Uh, yeah, well, we'll I, I have quite the collection. I, I, I can have There's an entire wall in our house. That yeah. Used to be a fold down bed. Now it's an entire shelf, like shelves under shelves, multiple layers of movies, wow. TV shows, discs, everything. And like, 
there we used to have it straight up, but the cats kept knocking it down, so now it just kind of sits there. Where it's like film reels all over there, like have the film stretching oh. out, like going on taping things. Actual film for one of the Star Trek movies. Wow. The TNG movie. Yeah, yeah. 35 millimeter reels. I had the, the film used to loop through the shelves to yeah. look as if it was going through a but projector. The cat was like, but the it. cat thought, that looks neat to chew on. Oh, like you let me look chew at the on that. And, you could see the and so I had to take there. all of that down and actually loop the film over the collection where the cat mm -hmm. now looks at it like, you know, I can't reach that. It's like that's too high, Dad. Bring it back down. I I can't chew on that. Oh. But, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So there's yes, there are. The, it's it's all 35 millimeter footage uh, from the movie Star Trek: First Contact. Wow, that's so cool. I'd like to also show you. You said Animaniacs before. I, I wish I was wearing it right now, uh, but I'm not. Um, I've got uh, PJs on, but that's my Animaniac shirt I got <laughs> last month at a, a, comic, a comic con in uh, nice. Liverpool. Uh, nice. Uh, so I got that. I wear it most of the time now. Um, and the, what was the other thing? Batman the Animated Series. I I cannot tell you how I can't just explain it in these way. It's my new hyperfixation. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, Connor, I've met Kevin Conroy, who voiced Batman in that. Here. Mm. Wow. Who was Kevin Batman Beyond? We have. I have a recording. Uh, for Connor's. I think it was his sixth birthday. I was recording. Um, I was recording Arkham Underworld, and Kevin Conroy was coming in, so he recorded a birthday greeting for Connor, where he says, "You know, hey, you spawn of the Scarecrow, you know, <laughs> happy birthday, happy sixth birthday." Oh, you know, yeah. bless. it's just it's really adorable. Oh, bless, uh, Connor. Do you mind me asking what year were you born in? Uh, 2010. I, my birthday is like the easiest to remember. 2010. Oh, 2010. So you're six yeah. years younger than me. I was born in 2004, which is kind of sad for me because a lot of my friends were born in 2003 and it makes me feel a bit left out. <laughs> the 20th day of the second month of the 10th You're all youngsters to me. I'm a February baby, so yeah. I'm a yeah, baby. yeah. You're, you're, you, you are all youngsters to me. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm a, I'm Connor's, a Connor's siblings are, are all in their 30s. I my my older sibling is thirty one, <laughs> there you go. Um, and my brother is twenty eight. And then there's me, and then there's my younger brother who's a year younger than me, so he's seventeen. I'm eighteen, so we're all getting old quickly. Yeah. But oh, we're... seventeen, eighteen. That's not old. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Trust me, that's not old. Oh, with the Batman thing, wow. That warmed my heart. How, do you still have that video message? We are the yes, yes, yes. We still, I still have the message. Oh, I still have the message. Oh, that's yeah, so yeah. wholesome! Wow. Um, I'd like to also bring up. Um, you've both met him. I've seen photos. Frank Welker. Yes, yes. I've I've known Frank Welker for many many years. Yeah, because he worked and, in America as well. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yes. Uh, and we ran into. We ran into Frank at Salami Studios in North Hollywood uh, when Connor was there to record uh, episodes of Stillwater uh, for Apple TV. And there was Frank, and I introduced him to Connor, and they took a bunch of pictures together. And so I'm always doing fact, this. The board to our studio here has a picture of Connor with uh, with Frank in front of a the Scooby Doo standee at uh, uh, at uh, Salami Studios. Is that the one where Connor's doing the uh, the Spock sign on his hand? Yes, I've, that's I've the seen one. that. I've seen that. Yes, that's the photo. That's the photo. And I we, love that all... photo so much. It's so yeah. Sweet. Oh. Yeah, so 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 Connor Connor got to take his picture with uh, with voiceover royalty. Wow, and Connor yeah, Frank is Frank is a sweetheart. He is absolutely a sweetheart. Uh, just he's just such a just genuinely nice guy. Um, it was quite wonderful. That's wonderful, Connor. How did you feel meeting Frank Welker? You've literally met the modern day Mel Blanc. How do you feel? Um, I. Barely remember him. I I don't think you knew. I like. I, I think, don't think you were just starting. You, you were, were just starting out, so I don't think you really understood that you were meeting a god. 
It was I, just kind of cool. You or mom or somebody, if somebody was there, you... I Jennifer, were, your sister Jennifer. Oh, you, they said that that was Scooby-Doo or Shaggy, I think. And I was like, wow, Freddy. Oh, Freddy, yeah. yeah like, oh, Freddy, that's Freddy. I had no idea they were like that. Oh, that's oh, that shouldn't be falling over. I would, okay. I would be screaming to me, I'm a huge fan of Frank. I've oh, met him a few times virtually. I've met him once in person. I'm meeting him again in October in Edinburgh. So, uh, that's uh, cool. Um, how have you guys met Peter Cullen as well, by any chance? No. Or Corey no. Burton, Tara Strong. I I I I used to know Corey Burton. Uh, he was very close to Mary Kay. I haven't seen him in many years. Uh, he. he uh, when when we did pal around uh which was back when mary Kay was alive corey was just a sweetheart absolute sweetheart i i would love to see him again miss him dearly oh bless i was in touch with him uh throughout the lockdown because he helped me with the documentary i did and he's so sweet he has autism just like me so what a lovely man he is Didn't yeah need. i miss him so yep. much oh yep. so we come to the quick fire question oh before I ask the quick five questions, I'd like to ask you uh, about classics for Connor because you show Connor a lot of classic films. Do I know? do, indeed. Um, I do, I do. Have you shown that him? came about? That came about mainly because uh, I was talking to a number of young people uh, at conventions and so on, and was becoming very dismayed to find how many young people wouldn't watch movies either made before they were born or made before the advent of digital special effects or made before color film and and, and I, I i would talk about these classic great pieces of uh great works of imagination that inspired me and made me want to be in it. and 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 I just thought how heartbreaking it is that here we live now in the age of the internet where all of these things are accessible to you and you're not watching them. When I was your age, I would have killed to have had something like the existence of the internet and be able, I had to get the TV guide and, and circle anything that sounded sci-fi, horror, and fantasy and try and watch it when it was on. And if I missed it, I missed it. Or reading about them in Famous Monsters of Filmland or Starlog or Fangoria Magazine and hope someday I'd get to see these films and so on. And I just thought, this is just not going to happen to my son. And, and I, I want him to get, so we watch everything from any era, from the silent era on, uh, mostly focusing on sci-fi, horror, and fantasy, because that was always my passion. Uh, and and I, I just wanted Connor to have an appreciation of, you know, great storytelling, regardless of whether it was before the sound age or before the color age or before the digital age. Uh, and it's become one of the major things that we've bonded over. That's such a sweet story. Connor, what's your favorite classic movie? Um, well, it depends. For like funny, like being funny, like normal funny, I don't know. There's a lot, but there's a specific subset of funny that I find to be the funniest of all. Mm -hmm. So bad that it's funny. Ooh. Like Plan 9 from Outer Space. Like It's an amazing movie. If you haven't seen it, watch it. It's They tried to make a $2 billion movie with a budget of chewed gum and some Band-Aids. I will definitely watch it indeed, definitely. Um I'll I'll you have to show me where you have to tell me where I can find it. It's on DVD, if it's on streaming service, because obviously it'd be different like in like a, it might be on Netflix and you know, uh there are there are various versions. It's it's been in public domain for many years. Oh uh, right. Okay. From outer space as is there I'm sure there are multiple versions out there. There are colorized versions. Oh. There are versions that were redone by Riff Tracks and, and as well as uh, Mystery That's Science scary. Theater. You can, you can find it. It's, it's one of the great Ed Wood classics, Plan 9 from Outer Space. And it is so ridiculously awful. Connor and I were just in hysterics the entire movie. 
Oh, bless you too. <laughs> uh, we've come to the quick fire round. Please, okay. Okay. ask you some quick fire questions and you got to answer them as quick as you can, if you can. Okay. So if you want to, I don't know. Um, okay, so what are your favorite colors or what's your favorite color? Green. Blue. Dodger used, blue in used, particular. It used to be red. And then I didn't have one for a while. And then I played a video game with my, my character green and that was the best thing ever. And now I love green because of green. Ooh, green's a good choice. Everyone always goes for blue. <laughs> yeah, I think the past two interviews I've had, they've always said blue. I'm like, hmm, well, that's at least I've got blue on my headphones. I'm a, a yellow person. Uh, I don't know why it's just nice. And also amber's another word for yellow, like sort of goldish, orangish, yellow, yep. maybe. Uh, what's your favorite food? Bacon and eggs. Good choice. Tacos. Pizza and cereal. Not at the same okay, time. Okay, I do like pizza. It's... Do not dip your pizza in the cereal. No, I'm a pi- can you imagine pizza flavored cereal? Ah, <laughs> they make, they, they make that pizza, doesn't sound good. They make pizza flavored uh, goldfish. Oh, yeah, do that they? they do. They oh, do. The little goldfish yeah. crackers. They do oh, make yeah. pizza flavored goldfish yeah. crackers. Yes. Isn't that the one where the snack? He doesn't mean the actual animal fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Animal. Isn't that the he snack means... that smells back? I think that's what the slogan is. Yeah, the snack Not back. here. <laughs> but that's that's funny. No, that's the slogan. It is? The snack that smells back. What do you think it was? Oh, I didn't remember the, ever seeing that slogan. But then again, I. Well, it's I, always in the ads. Like, it's the snack that smells back. Goldfish. I'm totally wrong. <laughs> He would know. I'm not gonna look. Goldfish. Hmm. Because we don't okay. get them in America. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> bear with me. We don't. I got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Unless we they're gotcha. imported to an American uh, sweet shop. Um. It just says the tagline is the snack that smiles back. It doesn't say Goldfish. when it was huh. produced or. There you go. Well, there what you country go. it's used in or not? But oh, apparently there was a Mickey Mouse variant where it was red crackers in the shape of Mickey's head. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. I'm gonna have to get some goldfish it. now. You've inspired me. <laughs> and a lot of American uh like like snacks and chips as you call them, uh, and candy as well. Um, I I I have a box. Well, I had a selection box. I ate most of them. Um, it had in it nerds, warheads. It had a tootsie roll, a Charleston chew. Uh, what else? Was Never there? heard of that. Charleston Chew. I've never, I've, I've never I haven't eaten that. mine yet. It's just a look. Uh, I can't find. I think that's pretty much it. Oh yeah, and they are uh, some sort of jaw break that's cinnamon flavored. I don't know what that exactly is, but yeah. Um, and also, I've had a Tootsie Pop before, and I've had a few like um, I love American cereal like Lucky Charms and uh, Reese's Pieces. I think the Oreos are probably my favorite. Yeah, and uh, actually. Do you guys put the milk before the cereal, the cereal before the milk? I have no idea. I have cereal, I pour the milk over it. Good choice. Good choice, you know. Yeah, everyone goes. I remember I asked Nolan North that at uh, Comic-Con Liverpool, and he said, all right, anyone who puts uh, milk before the cereal needs to get help. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he was like, everyone. everyone's other questions was like about Uncharted. Connor, Connor does not want the milk on the cereal until he's just about to eat it because he wants it nice and crunchy. Oh, I like, yeah, I like that as well. Oh, no, I'm like that as well. It's and true. I, when it's I have a chance. I, if the, if the cereal, if the cereal gets soggy, it. you won't eat it. Good point. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I don't ask for the milk while I'm eating it. Not while you're eating it, no, but I put it on before you eat it, like oh, seconds well, before I you like eat it. it. I never, like sometimes I, I call you to breakfast by saying, I've poured the milk. You do. I I do, yes, because you don't want it. You don't want your cereal soggy. Do you want to see the film that we had? Sure. Yeah, of course. Be careful with this. Well, that's not that's not the same one, son. This is a 16 millimeter reel. That's why this isn't in the living room with the uh, stuff. This is 16. It's thinner. The stuff that's around the film collection is 35. What's the actual like? This thing this, is? this is this is uh, uh this is sixteen millimeter. Well, what, oh, wow. what is there anything on it or is it just blank? Uh, I believe it's a trailer. Oh. I think it may be a trailer. I, I bought I bought this on uh, eBay to use as decoration for my 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 home theater, uh, and then wound up just using only the thirty five. So. Oh. 
<gasps> this actually sits as decoration here in our studio. Yay. That's really cool. Wow. Um, have you guys uh, got a favorite video game by any chance? Have you played, uh, I don't know, Animal Crossing before? Minecraft. Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft, Minecraft. too. Dad oh. is currently in the uh, in the process of building a full life scale enterprise. Yep, uh, life size of the original done. classic He's been Starship trying Enterprise. To bring it. There were a few times where we had to reset the world a bit back because they may or may not have spawned a few two billion mobs. We, we, I, I misspoke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. This is yeah, I'm done with the exterior. So the entire exterior for the uh, for the enterprise is done. I also uh, speed which is also a, 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 a VR um, Star Trek game. Um, I don't remember the name of it. I think it's the only Star, Star Trek, Trek VR. Bridge crew. Star Trek Bridge Crew. I also really like that. Yeah, I, I you are that. the bridge crew of the enterprise. I, I enjoy that a lot. Good choice, yeah. And the final question. You two question. are unfortunately stranded on a desert island and you only have three things with you each. What well, three things are they and why? Okay. A transporter pad and a battery so I can leave. And also Good a juice point. box because I like juice boxes. There you go. A transporter pad, a battery, and a juice box. Sounds like a good idea. How about you, Dino? Me. Well, let's see. Uh, well, um, well, number one, I, I, I guess I would have to have my, 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 my film collection uh, and something to watch it on that's fairly sizable uh, and something to protect them both from the elements. <laughs> <laughs> Popcorn maker would be nice too. Oh yeah, definitely. There's a huge one at this local theater that I'm doing a show at, and it's like it's huge. I can't. I don't know how to describe it. It's like the length of my wardrobe, and it's. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't. I don't think it even works. So I don't know why it's in the foyer. I'm like. Yeah, I'm know. always doing the. Uh, I'm always doing the hand crank, make yourself popcorn, and all that. And, uh, I like that popcorn. You know, and and, like and we we, we do we do it up okay. we we do it up in our home theater. Yeah. Uh, do you like sweet or salted popcorn? You two. Salted. Like I, I've, I've tried salted. sweet popcorn. Popcorn shouldn't be sweet. I don't know why people like sweet popcorn. It's like popcorn and candy are two different things. Why are you trying to fit them together? I do remember going on a trip to Europe and going to a movie because mm -hmm. going to the movies is like my favorite thing. And <laughs> going to going to a movie and getting some popcorn. And I tried some. And I was like, what? <laughs> And and I and I I I looked at my cousin who who, who was uh, living cousin? in Europe at the time. Yes, cousin Emiliano living in, who was living in Europe at the time, and he's like, "Oh right, yeah, I forgot to warn you about that." <laughs> you know, that that yeah, and and uh, and there was a person there who was uh, a friend a friend of ours who was from Europe who looked at me and said. Oh, right. You guys eat it with salt and butter. That's so weird because popcorn's a dessert. And I was like, I would say it's a dessert, from. to be fair. Say more of a snack, really, because I don't eat it in the cinema. It's like, not where I'm from. <laughs> oh, not indeed. Wow. So I'm going to do a fake in uh, not intro. Sorry, we've already done that. We did that ages ago. I'm going to do a fake outro now, and then I'll probably say goodbye to you two if that's okay. Sure. I'm going to show you something. Can I show oh, you yeah, something? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Did you hear that? I did. That is terrifying. <laughs> How do you do that? Those are actually some of the voices he did for Venom Groot for uh, oh. Spider Man Maximum Venom. Oh, that, that is really cool. That is really cool, <laughs> Connor. Wow, I can't really do much voices like voice wise. I can kind of do a call Dr. Claw voice, but that doesn't really. I can't, I, I'm not, I'm not a Frank Welker. I can kind of do, I can kind of do Raven like that, as Rion Metrion Zinthos, sort of like that. Um, I can't do any special like laughs or anything, but maybe it's in meant, the future, it's meant to be like the Demogorgon from Stranger Things. I, 
Oh yeah, and I can also. <laughs> oh, I think I remember. I think I saw a video on your dad's Facebook of you doing that voice. He's 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 very much a natural at this. <laughs> Born into the best family for it. To be fair. Yeah. Yeah, we make funny noises into microphone. Yes, and then the exchange, yeah. they give us little green rectangles with presidents on yeah. it. Yeah. We can exchange yeah. those for goods and services like Yay. toilet paper, food, stuff. Being so. you should have Not necessarily in that order. And cars, mm. indeed. Yeah. Wow. Just beautiful. You, you guys hey. are adorable. You Thank guys are you. adorable. You're Thank you. The perfect father son duo. Of course, fake out trope, and then I'm gonna say bye. Okay. 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 Don't go in the article. Give it. Give us your. Give us your fake out trope. Okay. So, Dino, where can find you on social media? I'm presuming that Connor doesn't have any social media. He does not. Uh, uh, um, but you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter on a blue moon, uh, but mostly uh, Facebook and Instagram. I see. Uh, you can also. Find me at dinoandrati.com, which is actually for both of us. Oh, wow. I can imagine a reality series uh, centered around you called The Andrades. <laughs> Father and Son voiceover duo. <laughs> oh, no. A wacky situation has appeared. The Andrades <laughs> in cinemas 2023. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes. That's oh. from a show. That's from a show. Speed, Speed Racer. Racer. Yeah, Speed Racer. How do you, how Early you anime it? show. Speed I've Racer. It. it was done in the late 60s. Um, oh, wow. And uh, and it's, it's kind of a running thing that there was a lot of times where they animated the, the lead characters doing a... And the they didn't want dub, to leave that. The dub people they, they didn't, didn't wanna, know what to do. Yeah, the dub people didn't know what to do, so they just would go... Oh! 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 And, you'll hear, and you'll hear that throughout oh! the show because it's 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 almost a it's almost a, like a like a, a a drinking game with juice or uh, where it's like oh they did it again and it's like it's really funny it, yeah. it's great. whenever they do it me and dad always go oh, oh! Yeah. yeah and also also one last thing before we leave I just, just want well it's her show she oh, should say oh, one last thing before we leave. oh no it's okay go ahead. It's what, okay. Is it? what is it what is it what is it have you heard of the show Johnny Sacco and his flying robot? I've never heard of it. What's it all about? Okay. This was a live action series. It was made in the 60s, created by the Don't guy tell who him made anything about what's I won't, happened. I won't. It was created by the guy who also created the animated series and original manga, uh, Tetsujin 28 Go, which is which is known in the US and Australia and so on, and probably there in the UK as Gigantor. Uh, and it's it's one of the silliest things you'll ever see. Again, they had this much imagination and this much budget. And it's it, it was a series. It was re, uh, Shout Factory Home Video found uh, uh, the entire original series and uh, released it. And we've been watching every episode. We have one left. Can, can I can I go and get the disc? Can I go get the box? No, 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 no. We don't. Oh, we don't want to wait for that. Okay. You can. You guys can look it up. Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. It should be on Shout Factory. If you look it up on Google, you're probably going to get spoilers. It's, it's it's another one of those father son things we share. There's some fun episodes. The director, the writer, and the producer, their names, they just look fake. I'm not going to say them. You Watch the show. Look at them. They're amazing. It's on Shout Factory. You can buy the disc. It's amazing. Ooh, I definitely will try at some point. Now you've inspired me to look up Johnny Socko. And his, here we go. Oh, oh, hang on. I think I recognize this. I think yeah, I they rec- also They made a movie. Where they, they did just edit. They episodes. edited a bunch of the episodes and together to make a movie. So you may be fighting one that. robot. And then like a few minutes later, he'll be fighting a completely different monster. And then a, then the defeat scene will be another completely different monster. Remember, I haven't seen it yet. We still have one more episode to get through before we watch the movie. He saw it when he was really young. He barely remembers Your the episode. Age. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. We share a lot of these things. Really, I, I feel like I'm my best buddy. And I'm glad you do. You guys are so cute, honestly. Like, you've warmed my heart. Thank you for making me smile so much in this past hour. You're very, very welcome. You're very welcome, and thank you for having us. 
You're welcome. See you at home. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Go check out Dino on social media and you might find a few videos of Connor on there doing his wacky, spooky voice. Do it again, uh, Connor. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell, and don't forget the hazard of Scooby Bergen. Yeah, no, never no. forget to ask you about the Scooby Bergen. Yes. Man. Connor, could we hear the little laugh again that you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's a laugh and more like a creature sound, like an echolocate kind of thing. Based off the Demogorgons from Stranger Things, I saw the first season. I haven't seen any of the others because too spooky. Uh, You'll get it. I Kate Bush is trending because uh, Running Up the Hill uh, was in one of the season four episodes. So that's going up the charts there. So yes. <sighs> you at home thank you for watching as connor said like and subscribe stay and safe bell, and, and hit do the, the bell thing and follow on the whatevers and do the social media stuff indeed. make the algorithm robots like you what he said indeed stay cut stay happy be kind to yourself stay safe we'll see you around <laughs>